And now we would like to welcome Mr. Jock Mendoza Wilson, who is the joint head of the British Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much for joining us on TVP World. Good afternoon. So we are uh, witnessing a European Council uh, summit in Brussels, and we are also uh, in the run-up to the, f the official celebration of the 20th anniversary of Poland's accession to the EU. So there's a lot happening on that EU front at the moment. Uh, and also, we just listened to a soundbite from Ursula von der Leyen on defense and security. So uh, we'd like to hear your comments on perhaps that uh, focus on defense and security in particular in regards to the latest events uh, on the attack from Iran onto Israel and perhaps the EU focus on trying to perhaps calm, the tensions calm down the tensions the, indeed. The response at least. Well, I think, it, you know, it's a... It's a the original purpose of this uh, special European Council meeting was, in fact, to address uh, Europe's economy and the European Union's competitiveness. Uh, but that's kind of rather been pushed aside uh, by the international agenda. And so what we see instead is, today at least, the focus is going to be on two aspects of uh, security. Uh, firstly, I think the first item on the agenda is going to be uh, the, the potential for war in the Middle East and the situation between Israel and Iran and uh, the situation uh, here uh, in Ukraine, uh, where this morning there was regrettably another Russian attack leading to 14 dead and 60 injured in the northern city of Chernihiv. Uh, what can we expect? In fact, I, in fact, I really expect tonight that we'll be saying that in Brussels, the statement will come out later, that what they will say is, look, they will encourage the two parties in the Middle East to return uh, to talks, to step back from escalation. And we saw the German uh, foreign minister, uh, Annalena Braybuck, and the British foreign minister, David Cameron, this morning uh, in talks with Isaac Herzog the Israeli president to try and get that message over. That this is not a time uh, for escalation of conflict in the Middle East, that in the words of Cameron, who said that, in fact, Israel should take the victory that they already have, having defeated the 350 strong missile and drone attack on Israel at the weekend. So I think what we're saying here is the call from all parties uh, externally led by the EU and others is please draw back and use cool heads and strategic minds rather than rather than escalate uh, and move towards the potential uh, of an extended conflict in the Middle East. Certainly. Um, concerning Ukraine, this is also a pivotal week as far as the legislation that's trying to be passed in separate packages there in the United States in the U.S. Con in the House of Representatives. Um, do you think that that's also going to be an item which is, uh, well, going to be contemplated at the European level as to what, what we're going to see come out of the United States and therefore what should uh, Europe be planned to do in case those measures don't go through, uh, at least in terms of support for Ukraine? Well, I think we can see two points here. The first one is that we don't know what the outcome will be in the US. So Europe is already recognizing its need uh, to be able to have its own defense industry, to increase its defense capacity, that Europe has to be responsible at the end of the day for its own security, particularly as the political uncertainty over who will be the president following the elections in the US later this year. And I think those mar remarks were really well expressed uh, by uh, President van der Leyen when she explained that Europe had to take care of its security, should be investing in defence, and had to make sure that it was prepared for what is a far more complex security situation than was in place at the beginning of the term of her, her presidency and the term of uh, the European Parliament. So I think Europe's ready for that. What will happen in Washington? Well, uh, we watch here in Kiev with bated breath. But uh, I think it's likely that some deal will be reached later this week or early into next, and some money will flow, hopefully, the $61 billion that Ukraine is waiting for, and hopefully that will flow quickly 
because uh, for Ukrainian citizens and for Ukrainian military, it is indeed uh, a question of life and death. From the British perspective, if I can just jump in there, uh, we see David Cameron, he's travelling with the German foreign minister to the Middle East now. Uh, we see that close cooperation uh, ever ever fruitful and obviously uh, the UK is very keen and uh, very active in supporting Ukraine uh, and we see obviously the the tensions there with the US in terms of uh, providing aid to Ukraine. Uh, what can we expect from the UK in terms of uh, that two-pronged approach in terms of supporting Israel and and Ukraine now that we see the situation playing out as it is? Well I think firstly what we've seen since the war in Ukraine began is ex excellent cooperation between the European Union and the United Kingdom on defence issues. We are in lockstep. Our relationship now in a post-Brexit env Brexit environment between Europe uh, and the United Kingdom on defence in particular is, is, is fantastic. Uh, what can we expect to see from the UK? Well, we're very firm in our support from Israel, but tough words will have been delivered today by David Cameron on the extent of the United Kingdom's ability to continue to support Israel if it escalates conflict uh, in the Middle East and if it fails uh, in the future to, you know, for example, improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Both of those messages will have been delivered yet again uh, by David Cameron and I, I believe also uh, by uh, both European and American diplomats. So what we can imagine is support, but that support for Israel is not unconditional. It requires Israel also to step up and improve its position with regard to humanitarian issues uh, in, in Gaza. It would also be important to say that, look, the reason we don't have a ceasefire in Gaza is because Hamas don't want one. The deal is on the table. The deal includes a ceasefire. It includes increased humanitarian aid. It requires the release of the hostages. Hamas has refused to sign this deal. So if we want a ceasefire immediately, it is Hamas's decision that it must take to do so. Right. Now, um, seeing what happened in these attacks last weekend in Israel and the United States essentially uh, and others, the United Kingdom and France, participating in downing some of those drones and uh, cruise missiles and even ballistic missiles, um, there are increasing calls coming from Kyiv that Europe shouldn't be afraid to also participate in the downing of missiles either on Ukrainian territory and maybe in western Ukraine, uh, certainly that which threatens European Union airspace. Um, is that something that may be discussed in Brussels uh, at this upcoming summit or should be uh, discussed at Brussels? Should the Europeans be thinking about that? Uh, comparison? Well, I, think the Europeans, I think the Europeans are thinking about this. I don't think that increased I don't think that a, a joint operation will be discussed because that's a NATO question and not an EU question. But what is it an EU question is the provision of improved air defence for Ukraine. It is air defence that is the key problem presently. It is air defence that led to the terrible attacks on the energy system in Ukraine. It's air defence that leaves uh, the frontline troops exposed and it's air defence which leaves the cities subject and civilians subject to Russian missile attacks. So where can the EU help? It's in this area of air defence. And we have seen the, the Germans step up to this and I'm sure they'll be bringing this to the table this evening with their idea of the coalition for urgent air defence for Ukraine. And that resulted in Saturday uh, in the delivery of another Patriot missile defence system. Uh, to Kiev. So what we really can see and hope that we might see is a tangible outcome of uh, this special council meeting is increased air defence commitments and provision for Ukraine. And, and that's something the EU can do and can do now. OK, well, uh, Jock Mendoza-Wilson, the joint head of the British-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce, thank you very much for joining us today on TVP World. We appreciate it.